All right. Welcome to With All Due Respect. Let's not forget that it is three months since the Kianjakoma brothers were brutally murdered on their first day of business. The brothers had finished a successful day of the new venture when they encountered police who quickly rounded them up for violating curfew rules. The two brothers, never seen alive by their loved ones after this incident, the police in question said at the time that the brothers jumped off from the vehicle they were in and that they had no further information on what happened to them. Six police officers are facing murder charges currently. The brothers are seeking to be released on bail. They still say that they can be able to, the case will be continued, you know, even if they are still outside the officers. And we do know that if they will be interdicted, we don't know that by the police. And if so, when? If this incident is a situation far too many Kenyans experience, the point of contact between the police and the citizen has had so many frictions. Take the case of Boniface Mwangi, for instance. A few days ago, he was beaten up live on camera by GSU officers. The matter has been reported to IPOA, and we will find out how far that has gone, or it's panning out. Tonight, with all due respect, we have police spokesman Bruno Shioso. Karibu sana to the program. Sante sana. IPOA Commissioner Praxidis Torei. Karibu sana to the program. Thank you. And human rights defender Gashehe Gashihi. I hope I got that right. Yes, sir. So smart. Karibu This is the question. Do you feel safe at the hands of the police from where you sit? Do you feel safe? What can we do to make this the point of contact between the police and your citizen something that can be worked on? Let's take a listen first at what the former Prime Minister said a few days ago on the difference between police officers at uh, in UK and the police officers in Kenya. We'll get to that. But let's start with should. Let me get my, my panel. We'll get to, to, to this uh, in, in a short while. But let's get to, 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 to our panel tonight. Let me start with you, uh, uh, Praxidis. Please, bring us up to date. Um, there's still questions. When we, when we told people we are going to have this program about you know, police sexism, and police brutality and all these questions, and they said, we're not, it seems you're forgetting about the question of the Kenzakuma brothers, that the fact that it's in court, there's nothing else institutions can do. Are we correct? Um, thank you, James. I'm happy to be at your show. Uh, I don't think that we can say we're forgetting the Kianjakoma brothers. It was a sad day for Kenya, a sad day for all of us. And of course, even as we talk about the Kianjakoma brothers, we know that um, a few days later, there was another death again in the same place. So um, the, we, we're just happy that things have moved on uh, and they are in court. The suspects are in court. It doesn't mean that it should be forgotten. We are still, as I pour, carrying out investigation uh, with respect to the subsequent deaths. So we are, we, we are, we are right there mm -hmm. on it, yeah. Uh, Bruno, welcome to the, this is the hot seat for you. But, but the question really is this, that uh, and get to where, without discussing the, you know, the merits of the case or the merits of this case, the police officers are still police officers. They're not being interdicted. Do you have any update on what internally is happening? You know, will this ever happen or we have to wait for the court process to end? Yeah, uh, thank you, James, for having me. Uh, thank you, colleagues, for being together over here. Uh, this case of Kenjagoma, uh, let me just echo what uh, my panelists, I mean, my fellow panelists have said. It's one of our saddest day in our policing in our life this year. And uh, our symbol is still go to those families that lost their loved ones. And we're on record right from the Inspector General and the rest of the police uh, leadership that uh, what happened was regrettable. And that's why the Inspector General uh, initially and promptly uh, ordered for investigations, which led to IPOA going there and then uh, IPOA again joining in. So we regret what happened. But having said that, uh, IPO is already on the ground, they're investigating that matter. And you've, the way you've rightly said, we can't really get into the merits of the, of the case. But going, I mean, uh, beyond that, uh, we are a country of um, rule of law, and people are presumed to be innocent till proven guilty. So as far as we are concerned, uh, from the human resource perspective, these are still police officers, they are still officers, although they are facing uh, uh, just I mean, uh, facing prosecution for court. So uh, they are interdicted. That's I mean, an administrative uh, rule, but they're still officers. Exactly. And we are waiting for the outcome of uh, the court processes so that further action can be taken. 
So in the meantime, we can now do what we call a double jabber to, to them. That I mean, uh, we are sucking them and they are already before court. Okay, position, yeah. Okay. Uh, this, yeah. this is a question that obviously not just a question that happened in, 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 in you know, Kenza Koma Brothers alone, but it happens everywhere else. And as a human rights defender, you get yeah. to experience this. Sure. And thank you very much. And I welcome uh, the new police spokesperson, uh, Mr. Bruno. Thank you so, so much. We really appreciate that you have come from uh, international posting. I hope the new post will be different now. It will not be denial, denial, and PR. <laughs> you will start owning up about criminal acts that are being done by the, the police service sometimes. If uh, police officers do have been taking the police service. And also IPOA that is doing very great work. And I agree, the biggest challenge that you are facing, that there is a, a police brutality, extrajudicial killing, and forced disappearance is systematic. Uh, we have never had a... Uh, a pol uh, an inspector general or a, a, a police spokesperson who will admit that we are having a crisis in, a poli in a policing in Kenya. We did the police reform. There was the issue of unified uh, command. Uh, there are a number of police officers who are going through trial. And I don't agree because when you say that um, the police are still going on a judicial process, we have an uh, internal affairs unit. It's supposed to follow up on those issues administrative, uh, administrative wise. Because there are some issues that, according to your standing order, you should not take them to court. If a police officer does not follow the standing orders, I think uh, there is some administrative action should be being taken. Those police officers who have broken the, the police standing order, they should not be continue being doing uh, police work. And especially when they have been involved in issues like uh, enforced disappearance or uh, murder as it happened to Kejakoma brothers. Because this continue putting the police service in a very bad light. I know there are many police officers, and I really meet about with them in Dandora, Huruma, where we have very progressive police officers who are doing very great work. But you find there are some clique who always, and I hope uh, you will not continue with the same saying, denial and saying, no, police are doing very great work. I think you start owning up, like in the U.S. where they say, we have committed crime here, we are responsible, and people will face the law. So, 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 so we hear this all the time, this, the question of, you know, is, is, the, is the problem systematic? Is it a few bad crops? Uh, and how do we fix that? Because we keep on going between these two things all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll jump in a minute, James, and uh, uh, Mr. Kasheke. Kasheke. Yeah. Thanks for welcoming me back home. Sure. Uh, he's brought up some few issues here that maybe a, a few of them I'll discount. But before I discount, I'll say that um, I, as a police spokesperson, I'm not there to do damage control, and I'm not there to be, I mean, denial, denial, the way I'm trying to pour it. Yeah. I'm there to inform, to educate, and also to learn. I and my, my officers uh, that I represent. So having said that, we are trying to be very objective. And you are being driven by uh, this, uh, this new philosophy of, I mean, uh, trying to forge partnerships with the communities. Because you know that's where most of the tensions arise from. So you say that, I mean, uh, you, you began by saying that this is systematic and systemic. It's not. Let me say that. And before even I say that, you are that your question again towards the end, because you say there are so many who are doing a good job and a few who are bad apples. And that's what it is. And that's, from what we see, that's what, it, what exactly happens. We don't deny that we have these problems. And to us, there's some of the challenges that are perennial and we keep on, and not just unique to Kenya Police or National Police Service. This is a generic problem being faced across all the law enforcement across the world. And there are reasons for that. It might be academic, we might maybe go into that in a separate uh, discussion or discourse. But police violence, uh, extrajudicial I mean, extra issues, um, police malpractice, these are even issues that are part of uh, core police scholarship. Yeah? So there are issues that come with the territory of policing, the nature of the police work, the complicity of police work, what we call, in fact, people call police as part of what we call the wicked. It's part of the wicked problems. Yeah? So it's something that, I mean, for us to understand and maybe sort out, we have to do so much other work in terms of uh, deep root analysis and stuff like that, so that we can now go to the core issues. And All right. Yeah. Okay. James, just yes. 
a bit of clarity. Yeah. Um, because listening to my brother here yeah. and yourself, I'm wondering whether we are addressing the concern that has just been raised with respect to once they have been charged in court. Yes. Because you remember that IPOA's uh, motto is to guard public interest sure, sure. also in policing. Do they still, they remain police officers, but the issue here is, do they continue carrying out normal duty or are they interdicted? That's a simple question. I mean, that's, I, yeah. really, I was coming to that. I was okay. just trying to, yeah, I was building yeah. towards that. I, I, I want you to hang on to this because yeah. I want to take a short break because this is a very important point that we yeah. shouldn't lose okay. it. And yeah. I need more time for it because that's a very important question on this very public case, mm. on this police, specific police officers, in a matter that is very publicly, you know, publicized. Do these police officers, having been charged in court for murder and, you know, taken, you know, plea, should they remain police officers and should they still continue being police work? Do we know that? We take a short break with all due respect. When we come back, we'll answer these questions. Get the best value for your money by subscribing today for Classic Bouquet at only 899 shillings for 30 days to enjoy 64 channels. Classic Bouquet. Premium content on Star Times. Subscribe today. Smart, no jaribu Zenka 0% loans for first time borrowers. Zenka, smart loans for smart people. Did you know at Ruiru Mabati Factory, we offer free delivery within the same day? Did you know at Ruiru Mabati Factory, you can open an account and lipa pole pole at your convenience? Did you know at Ruiru Mabati Factory, you can get customized sizes according to your roof plan to avoid wastage? Call us now on 0111-050-700. Ruiru Mabati Factory. Malisafi kwa beipoa. Mix of the Week. In association with Airtel. My head to my toes. Unanipigia simu kama nani. Eti ni achane mume wako nani. Unajua nadia kweli mini nani. Babe Chiki, wacha ni ndivi. Nakam. The only thing we can be sure of are the best data rates from Airtel. Changam Kia 1GB at 50 bob. Dial star 544 hash and select option 0. Airtel, the smartphone network. Paula, snap out of it. You're acting strange. No, honey, I'm perfectly fine. Paula, you're not usually like this. Did you take something? I want to take absolutely everything from that man. All right. Then we need to take a look at what assets there are that the two of you can negotiate on. For example, the house you I don't care about that stupid house. You can sell it right now and I'll be completely fine with it. I want the money for myself. But listen, Excelsior. Excelsior is a different story. Buy na ushinde na furahia na optiven. All right, welcome back. You're watching with all the respect on studio with me is police spokesman Bruno Shioso Praxidis Torre from IPOA and Kashe Gashihi, human rights defender. Uh, when we took the break, we were at the point of discussing the question of police serving after being charged. It's a critical point that we shouldn't lose. What is the, what is the law? Yeah, uh, to answer that question, I mean straight on, there's no law on that, but there's what you call good practice. Uh, because these are issues what you call in law uh, duplicity or uh, double jeopardy. 
Nothing stops the police from doing internal processes as maybe the criminal case goes on. Yes. But then it has some, I mean, uh, some caveats or some, some challenges along the way. Because there's those, uh, that, uh, that role of uh, double jeopardy. So you take somebody to court on a criminal matter who is now at an elevated level. And in between here again, you're taking an internal measure, which is still all aimed at justice. So the issue is what's the, what the objective? So the assumption here is let's pursue the bigger, the bigger I mean, uh, objective of uh, criminal justice because that's what the office is facing. Because if you meddle again, these are the small processes in between, he will use that against I mean, the major case. So here's the thing. So, so here now the issue is which justice are we trying to, I mean, uh, to achieve? Just internal justice of discipline or that justice I mean, for the victims of that heinous crime? Let's, let, let's, with all due respect, yeah. there's, there's a question of this blue shield that is always, you know, whenever an officer is, there's a question in any police station and what have we keep seeing it. And in the first case, and, and in this case, for the first few days, there was absolutely nothing that we had from the police officers on the ground. You know, there was nothing that, and the story was very simple, that these two boys literally jumped off the vehicle and no one has any material, any material information to add on this thing. Until there was public pressure, right? And at that point is when the police are like, oh yeah, so these this six who are on duty at that time and they should be charged. And at that point, getting justice for the brothers should be different. And what happens to the police of getting rid of the quote-unquote bad apple should be a different thing. Don't you think so? Yeah, I think so. But I mean, having said that, uh, Blue Shield might be an issue of police culture, which, which exists. But then that's, but at the end of the day, we should have investigations by independent bodies. And that's why you have a, a poor... We have, I mean, the Mindanian Affairs, which has which some kind of, I mean, autonomy. So the issue that we have Blue Shield, which is actually recognized as a part of the police culture, then, I mean, uh, uh, get into the way of the justice, because we shall have investigations. So what's the point of your internal affairs, then? If internal affairs cannot affect a matter, as soon as a question is happening and, say, police officers are caught and then go to court, so no, what's the point? It, it moved in very immediately. Promptly, internal affairs on the ground, and then Paul joined, joined in. James, help I me, help, help, help us understand is, uh, here. Yeah, the issue here is, uh, uh, I think once they're in court, really internal affairs may not have to investigate that yeah. because IPO is already seized of the matter. Of the matter. Right. Because, um, but then the issue here is, once suspects are charged in court, what does NPS do? Yes. Do you interdict them? Yes. Or are they suspended? Are they sacked? I think that's what Kenyans want to understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because uh, let me just help to put this point. Uh -huh. So this and these six police officers again, not discussing the merits of this case. Suppose they get the bail and they are they, they out. They would still have access to their guns to the police station, witnesses and whatnot. So what happens? That's what I said. What happens? What we are saying. I mean, the moment they are arrested, mm. the first instance, they are interdicted on half okay. pay. Okay. And then the internal measures, like they can't get, they can't put on their uniform, they must stay in the police lines, they can't go out. I mean, there are those measures. Yeah, okay. like under quarantine, mm -hmm. yeah, for all that period. But then the, the main case in court, I mean, criminal case, keeps on going on. Yes. And then once it's been determined, like maybe they are being jailed, or let's assume, assume that, then from that point now, the police again now resumes in that processes. Beyond that, mm -hmm. so we, you just put them on half pay, waiting for the outcome of the, the, the court case. Once it's been pronounced now, we initiate now in the, in the internal process. Okay. Should we now suck? Should we now I mean, uh, reinstate? Yeah, reinstate okay. or whatever, yes. Okay. So is, is, is this, in all honesty, like, like this looks like one of the biggest problems we have because on the many cases that then have sort of fallen through where witnesses have felt intimidated is again understanding the balance of power here. That someone True. who's in uniform, regardless whether they you know, have uniform or not, you know, and they have friends, again, we go back to the blue shield culture, right? They can get to the witnesses. And we know that for sure. And that has happened. Witnesses have been killed, disappeared for cases. So is this like the best sort of practice? Uh, well, James, um, what as a poor we do, because like I said, um, our main mandate here is to investigate, especially deaths and serious injury arising from police action, or in some instances, inaction. Now, under such circumstances, where we recommend for prosecution, and they're charged in court, and the witnesses feel that uh, their lives are threatened, then we also engage other agencies. We have the Witness Protection Agency, and uh, they have come in in a number of times 
to protect certain witnesses. Of course, the challenge again is that the Witness Protection Agency says we do not have enough resources to protect witnesses before a suspect is charged in court. So what happens in the intervening period? You may have witnesses disappearing. Yeah. Yeah, because investigation in most instances, as um, Geshe here, my brother here, was uh, complaining to me, some, sometimes investigation takes rather too long. Um, and it is during that intervening period that witnesses may be interfered with, others may disappear. So we would also want to add that the witness protection uh, unit also considers protecting witnesses even where they're in danger, even before suspects are charged in court. Thank you. Right. Yeah, but uh, let, me, let me say something about, yeah. at the basic level, first of all, in criminal cases, you have to call the presumptions of innocence. So, okay, these people are accused of having murdered but they are saying we did murder. They haven't confessed, and they say we didn't. So they plead not guilty, they're in court. So what do you do? That's the law. And that's why, I mean, uh, I don't see why we get so much information about the police, because we are having so many cases in this country. We have politicians with cases in court. They're serving the offices. Yeah? It's based on the same, same principle, that they are still innocent until proven guilty. That's why we have MPs in, 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 in the parliament right now, CEOs, they're still working, government officers. So it's the same same principle, and I don't see why you should have those double standards that when it comes to the police, they have to get they are out of the office, they have to be sacked. I mean, we don't know what is happening here. It's the same same principle, and it's legal, a legal process. I mean, uh, I think you want to make yes, a, a very powerful comment, and I really appreciate that. Uh, from your first point, you say that uh, the police service is doing some administrative yeah, action, yeah. yeah but the same principle, we have seen police officer, and just the other a week so has not passed. The commander in Nairobi has said police with pro box without uniform, they should not do they should not continue operating in Nairobi because that's why we've been having systematic enforced disappearance, extrajudicial killing. What I'm asking you, and you should the same principle. Mm. Why a police officer arrest people, book them in a and and designated the police station like a, an AP camp without OB, kill them, put them in a sack go and drop them in somewhere in Mavoko. You see, and I think you should start very well, coming from New York, where there is rule of law, and they have their own challenges. Like, uh, you know what's happened in COVID-19. Many young people were killed. Mombasa, Nairobi here, cases like Sam Moyo. The same time, there was a case of George Floyd, where you have come from. That matter was dealt with within six months. It was over. The police officer was held accountable, and there was a confidence and a legitimacy in the in institution of the police. What are we having a problem in Kenya? And I listened to your interview in Citizen TV. You say, it's normal for us to be blamed. I think you need to change from that. I start owning up and saying, we have a crisis. You have said it's a complex. But Kenya's problem, Kenya's problem is unique. It's very unique. I get it. I was, it's very yeah. unique because right. we have also a history where the police, and that's why even you came up with a new uniform, although sometimes it's very domestic. <laughs> we need a new software <laughs> where the police service can, can be able to, to believe in the rule of law. <clears throat> the, the biggest problem, and in fact, this matter is not only an issue of criminal aspect, the criminal act being done by police. It is impunity that if you have you are a police officer, you can do anything. Walk in the streets of Nairobi today. Right. Yeah. Let's, let, me let's, just, let me say this. I mean, uh, you see the problem here. We are making some great assumptions without any signal of proof. Mm -hmm. You see, when you say that, I mean, the police are raised, are put in sacks, killed, and thrown in the rivers, I mean, that one, I take offense on that. I mean, uh, we don't do that. And you haven't done that. And you can't tell me which officer has done that. Have, can you say Have that? You, there is a no. course, there is a course in court now. Which case? I mean, Number of cases in yeah. court now. One case for Mavoko three. Yeah. It is still in the in court. Maybe it is subject to discuss. These are your officers. When, when I began, I said we have a problem. I mean, we have problems with uh, malpractice, mm. the way it happens across there. I mean, across the world. That, I began with that. Not across the world. But then saying that, I mean, you know, you are trying to say that the problem or the force has a, I mean, the service has a problem of picking young boys, uh, killing them, putting in sacks. You see, that's wrong. I mean, this is, if there's a particular case, we can let Kiangakoma, we can talk about it, 
on his merits, and then we sort it out. You don't know that case. James, and, and, then, and the numbers, perhaps yes. Perhaps, James, mm. uh, back to Kianjikoma. Yes. Mm. Um, yes, I mean, I've listened to what you're raising, yeah. It's, uh, there's a lot of concern with that. But even look at the Kianjikoma case. There are a lot of issues that arise from there. What would drive police officers if, indeed, like in this case, Having arrested these young people, what happened in the intervening period? You know, the law says that um, in case of death, then that should be reported to IPOA within 24 hours. They were in the custody of police. Some of those challenges arise where very few times such reports are made to IPOA. And perhaps, it, it, I don't know whether it's sensitization, whether the police are aware. And, and also, the other issue that comes to mind what could have happened? Are there mental issues that uh, perhaps uh, come into play? Of course, we can't. I'm not discussing the Kianjokoma per se because it's in court, but I'm just saying using that as a case study in terms of uh, an example, are these some of the issues that we may need to look into that uh, may be affecting police officers? No. From, from that case you are quoting, I mean, uh, as an example, what you're just saying, that's what you call lapses. Mm. But the question is, are these lapses at, at which level? Is it at an institutional level or an individual level? And you yeah. posit it's an individual level. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's why people have been taken to court to answer for that. You see? So, and when you talk about sensitization, who is supposed to do that? Because that's the mandate of the poor. Is the poor to come and sensitize the police? Tell them, I mean, uh, okay, it's in law, you should be aware of this, but let's go further and do advocacy. Let's try to tell you what you should be doing. Have you done that? You should be doing that and surely that probe. I'm just saying, I mean, uh, let me just say that. You can't say yeah? it's a mandate of IPOA. I'm, I'm IPOA comes in to oversight. You are supposed to be aware of your own law. That I'm saying, yes. And your officers should be aware of your law. So you should sensitize your officers on your standing orders. But I'm saying, we do that, and that's why I came with this book. We do that all the time. But I'm yeah. saying, even you as a poor, again, you still have the same responsibility. We should do our part, you do our part. So, we as you are sensitizing, I yes. mean, but if you still feel that you still have a problem on that issue, yeah. you can step up again or talk to us, talk to, talk to the AG. Say, Actually, yeah, there's you're a, right. There's we a have been doing it. Yeah, there's a problem over here. How can we go about it? Like, so, the way we work James, we so, have raised that yeah. issue. Yes. And, um, like he says, we have been doing it. We have been going to the police training college. Yeah. We have gone to workshops for senior police officers. We have raised it with them. Yeah, because so we would, w we would want that you also take up that responsibility yourselves because we are unable to reach each and every individual police officers, but you're in a better place to do so. And that's why when we, 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 we come up with recommendations, we write to the IG and tell him, we have carried out, uh, even we've monitored, we've uh, inspected your premises. These are the issues that have come to light. Please deal with them. Are, are, we, are, we, are we sort of refusing to address the elephant in the room here? That, this, that, yeah. that, that, that there is a systemic problem and a power imbalance that we have, especially, say, in poor neighborhoods, right? The number of young people getting arrested in poor neighborhoods and, you know, who get, you know, disappeared in poor neighborhoods. It's not the same as the number of people who are arrested, say, in across this town. And that's data, okay? So are we saying Let's that... Let's quote it. Let's quote the data. Yes. Uh, no, Imlu, Imlu released the data, mm -hmm. all right, of the number of, in fact, those who've been killed, mm -hmm. all right, in, and in those instances that you call lapses. So, so killed by who? Who, 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 who? Many, the, many police. Many police officers disappeared yeah. by police officers. So here's the question, Bruno. Are we refusing to address the elephant in the room, which is the power balance that the police has and say, look, there could be a problem in how these matters are dealt in the community, right? And maybe we need, as you started directly say, we need a better way of engaging the community so that we find out at what point does that interaction between the police officer and community members start to lapse. You see, before the new constitution, I mean, the police had the old mandate of doing all these things. And still used to get blamed. And that's why there was need to create other layers of oversight. And that's why you have the poor. So these are issues now a poor should be telling us. I mean, so so, so this, this has been taken yeah, away from Yeah, I'm saying the poor has a main responsibility. It should be James, telling us. Let me, let me yeah. take up okay. that. Let okay. Me okay. okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Now we're making progress. Good progress. Th so let's. Th thank you, Bruno. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you for saying a poor has mandate yeah. to oversight you. Yes. And we raise those issues ever so often. One issue that you've just said that I'd like Bruno to help us understand. The National Police Service Act provides for community policing. How many uh, units have we set up? 
in terms of implementing community policing. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Yeah. I mean, we have raised it as I pour. Mm -hmm. We have said it is in your act. Can you establish community policing? Community policing mm. brings together members of the community. And in fact, the chair is actually a member of the community, deputized by a police officer. How many of those do we have? And the locals themselves, because we want to integrate sure. policing, we want to integrate security yeah. uh, with, the, with, with the communities. Let communities take responsibility. Right. And I want to pick... 30 to, seconds. I need to uh, a break. from there. <laughs> yes. The reason why, Madam Trore, they don't want to do community policy, because there's systematic corruption in the police station. Like all the police station, whether it's in Uruma, uh, Dandora, Kayole, those are extortion. extortion. So why, the OCS will fear to open a community forum because the small business people will come, like in Jacoma, or oh, they're extorting us. The, the reason why they, they had opened the business of, of, of doing a POC, they were arrested. Now they are no longer with us. So what we are saying, the reason they fear having a, 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 a democratic police service it's because of extortion. Okay. The ordinary OCS, I respect them. They are doing great work. But you need to tell us why they are demanded to say, take some money to the big bosses. No, I can't answer that because, I mean, I already spoke about it. Okay. Issues of, I mean, uh, generalizing issues, making some wild assumptions, and to be a base of a discussion. It can, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talk about issues that are on the table. All right. I want, I want to take a break. When I come back, we'll talk about community policing. Okay. All right? And, and, yeah, how, and, 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 and how yeah. it's implemented, not implemented, because that's yeah, a key sure. issue. Yeah. That's key. Yeah, sure. We'll take a short break. With all due respect, you. don't go too far. I, I see all your questions. They're coming in plenty and more. We'll get to address with them, but let's address the community policing question next. Let's address all the questions that we can have. Do with all respect. Don't go too far. Chips. Oya, oya, pesa po nyuma. Oya, bda. Pesa ako. Oya. Lipia Garonaldo pia. Ah, you. We. Chanchangu siniweke. Tulia. Ah. Wow, 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 wow. Una dono kama na fika kana. Niki mi amuisho malti petingi yane amecho meke. Swali ni uta dondo ka. Don't doka be simple na Odivets cash out. Wakele a bet, don't doka anytime. Odivets, bet extra Odi Nari. Jomanaki. Paula, snap out of it. You're acting strange. No, honey, I'm perfectly fine. Paula, you're not usually like this. Did you take something? <laughs> I want to take absolutely everything from that man. All right. Then we need to take a look at what assets there are that the two of you can negotiate on. For example, the house you I don't care in. about that stupid house. You can sell it right now and I'll be completely fine with it. I want the money for myself. But listen, Excelsior. Excelsior is a different story. This one-stop sourcing solution has made our back-end operations more efficient. Sandy has helped us to focus on growing our business and serving our customers better. Fourteenth October 2011 will always be remembered as a Rubicon crossing moment for the Kenyan Defence Forces. 
Kenya's intervention was a commitment by the Kenya Defense Forces to protect and defend Kenya's territorial integrity to secure sovereignty, national interest, as well as secure peace in Somalia and the larger Horn of Africa. You are warriors, isn't you? Yes, sir. And you really shown it because you are warriors. I know your work. I know how much you've done in these uh, operations. Uh, I know the commitment. I know the dedication. And I urge you to continue uh, in the manner that we are doing our job. Black. It's not dark. It's bright. Black is bold. Black is every color all together. <laughs> My thing, your thing, our thing mixed together. Black shines bright. <laughs>
done an article, they're supposed to roll out a magazine mm -hmm. on community policing. So I know they're doing well there. Okay, yeah. so let me go to Gashahe. Yeah. What, what, what is the good things from where you sit that the police are doing from where you sit? And how can that be scaled? But I really appreciate that from a uh, police spokesperson about what's happening in XC. We have a crisis there with the women and it's horrible. I saw the tweet from uh, Inspector General saying that uh, dealing with, up with that is uh, very horrible. And really we appreciate And I know there are very many commanders. Like I visit Huruma Police Station, Danora, and I find very professional officers doing great work. And you should support them. Those are Mashuja that we should celebrate tomorrow because they do a lot of sacrifices. When they put this uniform, it's a badge of honor. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. And I see them and really celebrate them. But they have a lot of challenges because they are within an environment that's very difficult. First of all, as you say, limited resources. Uh, even Ipoa has uh, limited resources. Uh, and I think this is what the police makers should address, that uh, more resources should go to the ordinary officers, uh, have well-equipped just imagine as you go to places like uh, Madare there, there's a very old camp built during colonial time in the Madare hospital there, opposite. That's where police stay in a very difficult situation. And I think even this has problem with their psychology and, and way of life. So I think this is something that needs to be looked at in a, in a very strong way. And I really, I, there are very many police officers. We are part of the police reform working group. I was there in Kabete when the president talked about new police reform, unified command, I was there. Uh, the former inspector general, when he said that uh, the police service uh, will work with communities, this is how a model police station would look for 21st century. But then, when you have... That's, that, that's, that's not been implemented. But, but when you have some police officer working with the pro box, looking like a gang, they arrest you, they don't book you in any police station, that Bruno, you have to condemn. Yes, and, and start condemning and, and, from and, now, and, and the, so that the good one, they and, know. And, and, and I love it when you say some. I love that some. Oh, but you okay, should start okay. condemning. An, an, an exception. Let, yes. Let, let, let comment. Comment. Yeah, that I'm saying. I mean, when you say that some, and that's what I'm saying from the, the, the word go, that by and large, we officers are doing a great job out there trying to secure this country and make Kenyan uh, Kenya peaceful I mean, a state. But there are a few of them bad elements, bad apples. Yeah, in a clean barrel. And there are people who are working so hard to weed them out through, as, a, as, I mean, as, as NPS, collaborations, I mean, partnership with the poor and others, similar stakeholders. And uh, even with the communities, that's why we were saying, even part of the community policing, we want to work with them closely so they, they can be coming to us with any confidence or whichever way. Let's know exactly, not just saying that they are bad, I mean, the people are bad, officers are bad. Let's know exactly who is this bad officer, what has he done. Then from there, that's evidence, you see, for us to take even internal action or even court processes. Because we can do nothing without going through the process. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Perhaps, James, okay. I could also um, chip in on um, some of the good things that are also happening in the National Police Service. And that is the Policare Centers. Yeah, sure. Uh, that you. was rolled out the other day. Yes. And it is um, uh, a multi-agency center that's coming up where you can carry out investigations on sexual and gender-based violence. And what I love about it is that under one roof, you'll have the magistrate, you'll have the investigator, you'll have the forensic expert, you'll have the uh, a doctor there, you'll have a counselor there, and you can quickly attend to a victim within one roof. Because those are some of the areas where you have challenges. You know, previously, you, you, you must have seen the jokes. You go to the police station, you report that you were raped, and then that police officer, those were the stories, calls another one, we see the, I say, e, e, buru, dear, your story, ten, atel, kushika, mm. you see, those, that dehumanizes you, That's and it, it actually uh, makes you go away, or you may not, others will not report to the police because of that. But now with these polycare centers, which is a very beautiful um, innovation that you have come with now, uh, the dignity of the victims they could be men, they could be women. True, right? It's preserved. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I like that. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, we'll talk about the, someone asked about the, the Boniface Mwangi video and yeah. the statement. You must have seen the response that, you know, your statement, uh, you know, elicited online. Do you still stand by this? That's the question. Do you still stand by, by this statement? I do. All right. Yeah. What happened according to you? Yeah, uh, what I saw immediately, I haven't spoken to Boniface Mwangi and maybe, but uh, what I know is that I looked those videos there are two clips mm -hmm. yeah i looked at them 
first as a person and then as a spokesperson and as an investigator. I've sought so many, many, many of my years have been this year. So I did my analysis, so the court called analysis, looked at them, and then uh, I went further. I really needed to confess, but I was able to get this material online. There was a statement he written himself. I went through that. Yeah. So I made, I mean, uh, at, at, at my personal level, I mean, uh, I made, I mean, my opinion on that matter. Mm -hmm. Then I went even further to talk to other people. I mean, especially, I mean, those officers. I spoke to them for their account. We were exactly collaborating with the, the account of Bonfas himself. Mm -hmm. The only difference here between me and Bonfas is that when he said he was beaten, and I said he wasn't beaten. But the rest of the things, because he said he was running himself, he fell down himself. I mean, we, so, we, saw, we, saw him on, we saw him on video surely getting beaten. I mean, you see, it depends on how you look at it. If you look at it, you'll say, it's, even me, initially, I thought he was, it was being so beaten. What was happening? But what then when you, you know, I said I did content analysis. Okay. And that's a different, that's a different level right. of looking at it. I didn't yeah. just look at it. Initially, mm -hmm. I looked at it, and I felt he was being beaten. But then I did content analysis. And there's a person, not as, because I know the matter is, I mean, is under investigation. So the investigation maybe have a, a different opinion. So I made my statement based on my opinion at that particular time, because I had to respond. Mm -hmm. And I still stand by it. What I know that the main problem that was there was about the issue of identification. And that was the bond of contention between police and, and officers. Mm -hmm. And again, I felt it was in bad test. It, it shouldn't have been I've, I've gone to that. So, but I don't want to go into the details of what matter because it's an investigation. Yes. But, but uh, I, think I stand by my statement. I, know, I, st I still would like to want to understand what exactly was happening in that moment after he fell down. You know, what, what was the... There was, a co there was a commotion there. There was a commotion. They were trying to get his camera. I mean, not camera, but his, his, phone. his phone. He stood up. Somebody, I mean, held him. But nobody actually beat him. You stand by that. No one beat yeah, when he first walked in. From what I saw, and there's something maybe extra, or the other videos, okay. about what I saw, the, okay. what I saw. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, thank you, James. Uh, I think I also saw that uh, video. Yeah. But uh, perhaps I would just say that uh, Epo is currently investigating that matter. Uh, so, of course, when you're investigating a matter, you must get um, hard facts. You must get witnesses. So we, we are on to that particular case. But one other thing I might want to say that um, emerged is that the law is very clear with the fact that you must wear a name tag for police officers. Yeah. And the number. And, like the spokesman. That the spokesman yeah, is, yeah. is, we have his name tag and his and number. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, that's that question. Yeah. And that's yeah. a weakness that uh, a number of police officers don't display their name tags. It's something you might want to work on, please, because that is in law. And also for the uh, care officers, because you see, when you find police officers have had to use force, kunachanzo, what is it that led mm, to that? Yeah. You know? And perhaps if they'd identified themselves, it wouldn't have reached where it reached. Even for the so-called uh, care officers, I don't know, because we are investigating the matter. From what we just saw, uh, they did not produce the identification. I think Kiara's statement, Kiara said this one not the officers. The officers, uh, you know, display their names uh, in and identify themselves. This is a statement from the Kiara no, themselves. No, they didn't say that. Well, uh, yes. James, but before you even answer, and that's, that's why we are saying that the level of impunity. Now, some people can wake up in the morning and say they are police officers. They go doing extortion, closing small businesses, undermining a lot of uh, institutions that we have. Because, and I want you to answer the same question as you're answering. Recently, the commander in Nairobi has issued a, a statement saying that in Nairobi, they, they, they don't want to see police in pro box without uniform, in civilian. Is that still happening? It's still happening. Uh, even when you go to Dandora, uh, Kayode, roundabout from Uruma, you find police without uniform. And he said the uh, OCS in those areas will be uh, held accountable. Why was that reason? And it's connected with what uh, Madame Torre is saying that you have some, some rogue officers. And even Nation had a very strong story about the search done, and you denied it, saying that there is no data okay. about this problem. Yeah. Let, let, let's allow the, 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 the spokesman to respond. Yeah, and uh, just a minute to correct uh, uh, Commissioner that, I mean, uh, there's nothing in law about, I mean, uh, identification by name tag or whatever. What is there, I mean, those are guidelines by the IG. In the serving studying orders. Please look at your act. Look at the sixth schedule. Yes. Look at your act. Sixth schedule. Okay, I will. Yeah. yeah. But let me say this. Uh, it's under the service studying orders uh, and the instructions of the, of, uh, the, uh, the IG. And uh, it's clear, yeah, I, I agree with that, that uh, any officer pulling on uniform should put on I mean, a name tag 
and the service number. But what people forget is, I mean, uh, that's normal working place. Those officers are GSU officers. GSU used to know them, they put on what you call it, operational uniform. They don't have to put on the name tag. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, for them, they all, the issue is, were they on duty? And yes, I can confirm they were on active duty. And somebody, there were some other questions even online, on, uh, why would GSU be involved in issues of revenue collection? It wasn't an assignment for GSU per se. There's an, a framework we call multi-agency framework, where we pull officers from all sectors to work together. So uh, NMS has, has the same kind of a structure, where it has all the officers. So that day, it just happened that now the ones who are on duty were the GSU officers. And that's why they couldn't have the name tag, but they were in uniform. So the question is, were they, I mean, uh, did they identify themselves, I mean, beyond, I mean, uh, because even Mwangi himself didn't have a problem with the officers. His problem was with the, with the care. Yes, and the care but officers were not, were not identified themselves. And I, I was going to, to, to go, to, to, go to, to, to your response yeah. as we need to wind up. The, the question that is being raised here is, if police, and it's part of the law, for police to identify themselves so that I know Officer X, like now Bruno Sisho, written here with your number, if you have a problem with someone, myself, whatever it is that I'm arresting you, I can say I've been arrested by Officer X, one, two, three. This is the whole point. Is it so? Yeah. So if we can have gray areas of some police officers can walk in, and as long as they have a uniform and it's an operational area or whatever that requires, then that's a gray area that needs to be addressed. Don't you think so? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So they may not even be police officers. For yeah, so, so wearing a yeah. police, wearing yeah. a uniform doesn't mean I'm a police officer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. I'll stand on that question because if you are doubting an officer, even now, when is the uniform? Yeah. Then why would you do, I mean, what to stop you from doubting him with a name tag? No. Or what's hard? If an officer, if a crook can get a police uniform, what's hard for that crook to get a name tag? You see, that's my argument. So the issue is, I mean, you are a reasonable person. You can make your judgment, like the way I came in, in this mm -hmm. uniform. Mm -hmm. You can decide to believe I'm an officer or doubt me, depending on your reasons. Because I can still come with this uniform. It's because it's fake. It, this will still be fake. In fact, it's, it's cheaper to get this name tag so, than so, the uniform. So what's, what's the point of identification then? That I'm saying, so the issue is that identification is just for you to be satisfied that it's an officer. And okay. that's, that's why I bring in the word of reasonableness. How reasonable are you to identify somebody? Okay, I need to wind down now. Yeah. Uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> From where we sit, yes, sir, yes. I pour up with all these investigations and yeah. what's happening in the public space. What do we need to do to make sure that the encounter between the police and citizens is smoothened? We can't have these frosty relationships forever. Sure. What do we need to do? Like, uh, I think the most important thing that we need to do is to embrace community policing as per law. It will help a lot. Because then the police will also benefit from intelligence from the community. It will bridge the gap and will build trust because that's what we need to do. All right. Thank you. What do we need to do? Uh, we welcome the Kenya Police Service as happened when they say the police reform. We have very many social justice centers across the country. In Nairobi, we have Malare, we have Dandora, Kayole, Mukuru. All these social justice centers are willing to work with the office. And we welcome you. Come and visit us with your OCS. Let's discuss. This is not your problem. It's all our problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as, as you make your point, I have the numbers of cases, police killings in 2020, 157 people have been killed this 2020 alone, right, by police number, by missing voices. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we need to do, Bruno, from where you sit? Congratulations on a new job, uh, Karibu Sana. You have to make, you're the public face of the police. From where you sit, in, in whatever period that you're going to be here, as, as someone who's experienced and someone who's worked in other stations, what do you think that needs to be done to smoothen out the relationship between the police service with the people that need to serve, the citizens? Yeah, and that's what you're having in police reforms. And uh, a big plan of that is actually on community policing, what you're just talking about, which is actually uh, r running well, but at a, uh, maybe at a, a smaller scale. But you're still progressing it because as reforms, uh, everyone knows about reforms, uh, is a process. It's not a one-day event. So we're still working on it deliberately. And I've given even concrete examples of what's happening on the ground right now. And you're still working on that. My office, uh, being a, an office of strategic and operative communication, we are again trying to engage the public, trying to reach out to them and tell them who they are and who we are and how we should, how we must, not even how we should, how we must come together. Mm -hmm. Because without that, we can never be anywhere. Mm -hmm. We can't realize our objectives and they can't be safe. Absolutely. Because we're there for them and they're there for us. Police are the, the public and the public is the police. Is the police. Yeah. Very well spoken.
Kasheke, Kashi uh, human rights activist. Maybe just one thing, James, please. Right. I just want to also remind Kenyans that uh, we have a toll-free number, 1559 in case they need to report a, or make a complaint. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll get that communicated. Yeah, and to all those police officers who are doing a good job, they are almost yes. yeah. So happy Mashujia Day tomorrow. All right. And, and for me, to celebrate those police officers that are also doing great work, and also uh, we, we give them uh, best equipment. Yes. And celebrate them as many, uh, many as Mashujia. As many as we can. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Police spokesman Bruno Sisho. Thank you very much for coming to the program. Appreciate Please it. come again and again. We should be coming yeah. as well. Yes. Thank you. Thank well, you, sir. with all due respect, we have talked about the very difficult things. Matters of country, matters of police are always difficult, but also always, there's always a point for us to agree. And these conversations help us to move the conversations forward and forward. And with greater public knowledge, obviously we're all getting better with time. My name is James Smart. Please have a lovely night. We'll do this all over again on this station at the same time next week. But for now, happy Mashuja Day. Enjoy your holiday.